the edge of my seat. It's so exciting, Chris. <laughs> Now, where's Gillian this week? Well, she hasn't been sluggish this weekend. She's travelled from Yorkshire. She's bypassed Sherbourne. She's gone down to Cornwall and she's on the coast just near Padstow. And actually, Cornwall is her home patch. Lovely place to live with some beautiful beaches. But for some of our wildlife, the beach can be a challenging place to survive. Yes, I'm here in Cornwall. I'm on Trianon Bray near Padstow, like you say. This area is like well known as a holiday spot, but I'm surrounded here by these rock pools. And believe it or not, these rock pools with the creatures that live here are one of the toughest places to live in Britain. And here is why. It's because the tide is king here. It sets the routines, the rhythms of the day. As the water recedes, it leaves countless marine creatures in extreme conditions from underwater conditions to scorching on a day like today and dry conditions on the rocks. Now, joining me today is Matt Slater from the okay. Coral Wildlife Trust. He is, I'd say, a professional rock pooler. Matt, you were rock pooling ever since you were a kid. This is your home yeah, territory, isn't it? Yeah, I'm a yeah. professional rock pooler now. <laughs> it's a lovely job. <laughs> so, listen, talk, tell me about the challenges of living in a rock pool if you're a marine creature. Well, there's a lot of competition and there's very limited resources. So all the animals in here, even though it looks like a lovely, peaceful, serene environment, they're actually locked into a, you know, a really murderous world, a, mur a very uh, hectic existence. And we have set up a fish table. Let's go to the live cameras right now and let's see if we've got any action. Okay. Right, we've got, what have we got so there? So check it out. Um, we've got a big shanny here. So this is a, a type of blenny, a very, uh, um, a very bold creature. It's, it's smelt that bait and it's been attracted into our this underwater bird table. This must be like Christmas table. for them at the moment. This is more yeah. food than they'll see so, in a whole year, presumably. Exactly, yeah. These guys are really tough. They've got a, they're a scavenger, but they're all opportunistic. And they, they've got these really sharp teeth as well, which, you know, you might actually get to see in action. There's one actually twizzling around, so like a crocodile, when it grabs onto its prey to oh, remove a yeah, chunk, it will spin. That. In the background, you can see some grey mullet, and this is all happening in the rock pool right behind us. It's amazing. That's amazing. So that is going <laughs> on right now in the water in the background. So this is great. I mean, the, the animals there, they're trapped in the rock pools. They're competing fiercely for food. But what about the animals that get left high and dry? Let's take yeah. a look over here. Now, we've got to go a bit carefully because the tide has only Oops, just gone go. out. Yeah, so it's all some. a bit slippery. But these ones right here, this is a good example. Now, most of you will recognize what these are. These are limpets. Now, you'd come across them like this, and they look like they don't very, do very much. But if you speed time up, you can see what amazing creatures these are. So when the tide is in, they go off on these foraging trips and they really do get around. But as the tide starts to go out, they have to find their home scars. And that's that little bare patch there. And the limpet will fit snugly into that. And the reason why, it fits like a lock and key. And once it's in there, just like that, it hunkers down and it creates this watertight environment around it and it stops it from drying out. Now, Matt, you just showed this to me earlier, which yeah. I think is a really good example of the, the whole scar. So, yeah, over, over the years, you know, a limpet returning to the same place each tide will actually cut down into the rock if the rock's soft enough and make this, this oval-shaped scar. So these it's are amazing. highly territorial, but listen, in the background there, yeah. those are the <laughs> bad lands of yeah, the intertidal zone, here. aren't they? Let's go take a look. Right, so, so in yeah. all these cracks you showed me earlier, let's, let's it's see. It's quite amazing. You can see lots of little barnacles here, and lots of people are familiar with these. But what many people miss are the tiny, tiny creatures living in amongst them. So, have you seen these? Have you ever seen these, these before? These are small, They're yes. Amazing. Small They're periwinkles. Tiny. And that is, they're like minuscule. They're like millimetres small. It's very, very difficult to appreciate this. So if I get my finger into the shot the there, shot. that may give you a sense of how small and tiny these are. So from these tiny creatures, this is how they survive up here in the splash zone where they get very, very little cover. So from the tiniest creatures, tough creatures, later on the show, we're going to see some real Cornish giants. But for now, it's back to Sherbourne to Chris and Michaela.